This is Chaos Cast, the Chaos Community Podcast, where we share use cases and experiences with measuring open source community help, elevating conversations about metrics, analytics, and software from the Community Health Analytics Open Source Software, or short Chaos Project, to wherever you like to listen. Welcome to this episode. This podcast is sponsored by our friends at Sustain, a community of open source enthusiasts and professionals that care about the future of open source. Learn more at sustainoss.org. Today, your host is Georg Blink. Hi, everyone. Good to be back with you. I'm a co-founder of Chaos, co-lead of the governing board. I work at Viturgia as the director of sales. And I'm super excited today to highlight work that is happening in the Chaos Project in the Asia-Pacific region. And for this, I have four guests, Shoya, Willem, King, and Clement. And yeah, if you all want to introduce yourself to our listeners, Shoya, if you can start us off. Hi, everyone. I'm Xiaoya, and I'm a postgraduate student from the East China Normal University. And I became a technical writer in 2020 for the Chaos Badging Project. And that's when I was really engaged in Chaos. Actually, I still remember how we have the weekly Google Summer of Dog meeting with Josh Krupp and Georg and Matt, and how nervous I was when attending my last Chaos episode. So after my technical writing career finished, together with other folks like King, Clement, William, we started building the Asia-Pacific community of Kios. Yeah, that was a really great project. Uh, thank you again for all of your work with the badging project, which has done phenomenal. And we still value the, all the documentation that you created with us. Yeah, thanks for mentoring in the period. Of course, my pleasure. Willem, would you like to introduce yourself next? Hi, everyone. My name is Willem Jiao. I'm a technical expert of Huawei. I'm also a member of Apache Software Foundation and also initiator of Apache Local Community of Beijing. And I get in touch with the chaos since last year and uh, attend a lot of community meetings. It's a meantime, I learned a lot of from chaos community, such as the podcast and how to run the meeting. And I use a lot of things I learned from chaos to the Apache local community of Beijing. And I'm ready to be glad to hear, to share my experience building a community by using this technical and even uh, some soft uh, skills, which I get from chaos. Yes, that's great. And I look forward to hearing more about what you get from chaos and the value that it creates for you. Because that's what this podcast is about, elevating these stories. So King, introduce yourself if you would like. Hi, everyone. I'm from Huawei, China. I have six year open source software management governance experience. I'm meaning responsible for the security system for the use of internal use open source software in enterprise. Last year, I first heard about the chaos. It was uh, Ho Pei Xin introduced me, uh, who is my supervisor, who is also the Linux Foundation board. Chaos was also the first uh, open source community I participated in. You know? The community is uh, very friendly. First, I come in the chaos community and I love to be here. And uh, I can also learn a lot of ideas. And then I set up the Asia Pacific conference and I submit my first metric, the branch next circle. <laughs> and uh, I'm still exploring the metrics model. And now we have set up the metrics model work group now. And you know, this is my first attend to the broadcast. Have fun. Yes, and welcome. See, I, I love it when someone like you says, hey, I'm new to open source. This is my first open source community, and I really like the community. So I really appreciate those kind words. Yeah. And Clement. Hey, hello, everyone. I'm Clement. 
And I am the colleague of William, and King is my mentor of the Chaos. So he led me to the Chaos community, and we get together, hold two Chaos China meetups. And now I work at Huawei, and I'm the developer experience manager of the MySpore. The MySpore is kind of an AI framework, open source projects opened by Huawei. So I'm working at it and work for the DevRail and using AI technologies to help the community. So when I entered the Chaos community, I found that there are a lot of metrics to help the community manager to operation their communities. And I can share some stories of how to use it to the MySport and discuss it. Yes, absolutely. I would love to know what kind of metrics you use and how you use them. One of the things that I've been really amazed by is the community that you are creating as part of chaos in the Asia Pacific uh, region. And right now, I know you have hosted two meetups already. The most active translation of chaos metrics is in Chinese. And you're driving the conversation around metric models. So those are all topics that you already mentioned that I want to hear more about. So how did this Asia Pacific community get started around the Chaos Project? What were the drivers and what's bringing people in? If I remember it correctly, before the first meetup, we had the Asia Pacific bi-weekly meeting and the initial, the original intention is to make it a bit more time friendly to folks who base in Asia. And also during my participation in Chaos and iPhone, actually in Chinese, in the open source circle in Chinese, many organizations, communities, and many people, they have heard of Chaos, but they don't know that much or really participate into it. They need metrics. They have the scenario and because they need to better know their project and they care about metrics, but caused by time zone or language or lacking time, they still keep a distance from the community. So that's when we decided to build the bridge and initiate the first meetup in Shanghai last year. And if anyone wants to add something, you're all welcome to speak to this as well. From my experience, I have been involved in open source development for, um, for a very long time, like 15 years. But for my experience, it's the language barriers and the time zones issues, Shaya mentioned, is the obstacles for the Chinese audience to participate in this kind of project. And I really appreciate Chaos by weekly meeting. And it's built a connection. And just to keep the people regularly talk to each other. And when I run the obviously local community, uh, even we are in the same city, but we are not in the same company and we barely have the times to chat with each other. So we use these meetings to keep the connections and to discuss you know, some things we can do together so to get the engagement, to make plan and uh, even to get it uh, into the real. So for the meetup, in-person meetup, it's really helpful to build uh, another connections and um, to the local community. So I really think this is uh, quite important things for us to advocate some new technical or even help the open source community to grow. So, so I really appreciate Chaos gave us a great opportunity for, for that. And uh, for my experience, I really learned a lot for it because my background, I barely have a chance to set up a community, but I have to do that because in China, it's open source community manager or open source advocate or evangelist. We are short of the evangelist. So it's really important for us to build this kind of event. And I think Xiaoya and King did a very great job to hold this kind of meetup. And I'm really glad I, I'm be part of that. Now, my first fact, I have three, three things. Three things that pushed me to hold this uh, Asia Pacific meeting and uh, the Chinese meetup. You know, first is the uh, Eastern and the Western have a different mindset. So I think we 
I want a lot of people with a different get involved. So, you know, chaos is a diversity community. We want a, a different uh, voice and a different idea together. You know, this, this is first. Second, as a mission, uh, as a Xiaoya and the winner mission is a language barrier. So, you know, talking the Chinese together and we can um, know each other more easily. In a second. Third is time two. First, I have established each of the meetings because I just, uh, uh, first uh, I attend every meeting and until the late night, you know. <laughs> and I think it's, uh, I can't stay a long time of, uh, like, like this model, you know. So I think uh, we can build the bridge about the Eastern and the Western different time two together and uh, we can this meeting to talk about our ideas. And last, I wanted to more and more people to in China, in Asia Pacific, of, of course, include uh, Japan and the Korea and uh, join in the chaos because they can learn about learn more in chaos project. And it's very useful. Maybe it's very useful in their enterprise and uh, their community. Yeah, I think it's very important for the chaos boards can join our Asia Pacific meeting and the uh, chaos meetup because there are really a lot of metrics in the chaos and a lot of, a lot of working group in chaos. So we cannot get in enough information in time. So the chaos board can join us and share the not values of their created in the community. And we can share our ideas about how to use the metrics like are the incoming working group, a metrics modes that accept the efforts of the chaos board that we cannot build is a very valuable working group. So I think that's very important for us. And the next one is that I think join the meetup in China that we have a different experience in the community online. When they went in China, they are going out the house or the home and the, to join us as a party. We discuss with each other, share different ideas. Uh, we talk about not just only metrics, that it's about all about the community. That, that's enlarge our talking materials and our minds to find out what's more valuable to us. So I think that's key point. And one thing you have brought up now a couple of times is the the value that having chaos metrics for your work in your local community. And so maybe we can talk a little bit about metrics because I've seen you have some ideas for new metrics. I know we have discussed some of them have been added to the metric release, I think. And then you're even thinking further. I remember, I, I think, King, from your group, there was this model of how do we connect different different metrics around the issue life cycle and how do we look at the different stages of software development through different commit metrics and issue metrics, pull request metrics. It sounds like you all are wanting to take this a step further into metric models more formally, which I know is very early. So I guess the question here is the value that chaos metrics provides and what do we need to do to make it even more valuable to you or in your use case? In my company, we want to metric the quality of the software and we have many, many different metrics, indicators, the uh, health of the, the product, uh, software product, because we just uh, to follow one, one thing is uh, IPD, integrate the process development, produce development and the uh, First, I come to chaos. I found the metrics is uh, just a dot metrics. Uh, they, they have a relationship and I want to link the different metrics together and build it on the Git workflow. So I propose the two metrics. Is, one is the life cycle. You know, if you have a new feature, you must to new, open a new issue and you must to a new branch. And uh, to relation the, after you finish the branch development, and uh, you must relation the request to mapping the issue. You know, there are 
So we talk about the issue and the pre-class mapping in the <laughs> in chaos issue. <laughs> we talk about it. <laughs> yeah. So it's a whole, it's a full Git workflow. I wanted to link it together and like a chain, one by one, not one by one. Yeah. So like uh, we can uh, say the top down. We can see from the top uh, to say the chaos, uh, which uh, model uh, has some problem and have some issues. So we can fix it. Uh, yeah, uh, because it, it have a relationship different between the different chain. So I want to build this uh, model work group, and uh, I want to uh, link the different metrics together to find the factor, to find the relationship between them. Yeah, it's really interesting to think that, yes, we have this way of developing software, whether the integrated product development or in open source. I don't even know if we give it a name, but we have the pull request model. And there are several stages in that process where we can measure things. And I think this is really valuable to think about at what stage does which metric come in and what does it actually tell us about how the soft development is going? Really powerful. From my experience, I did mention in the introductions and I'm a, a mentor of the Huawei inner source project. And because there's a lot of projects we need to care about. So the metric could help us to know the project health. And we usually, the open source journey of the Huawei started maybe six years. And uh, normally we, we just think we open the code, the community will come. And uh, unfortunately, if there's no interactions between the upstream and downstream, if we still keep in do the business like we are doing in the company in the old way, we won't have the community. So the discussion, the first response time of the issues, these metrics can give us a very good indicate to show the health of the project. And I think this is very helpful for us to know better about the status of the projects. And I am really appreciate uh, Chaos Projects provides us such important information. And from my side, I'm very curious about how to cultivate the community around the open source project or the inner source project. And so the, the metrics of the social uh, currency and the that is a very interesting topic, and I tried to participate in that conversation, but unfortunately, I, I didn't have time to do that. But uh, I think this it, it is a very uh, good way to go, and this is a very advanced topic, especially for the community managers. And if they uh, want to cultivate or facilitate the community, they need to know about these things. And I think knowledge behind of these uh, metrics could help them to do these things better. And in this podcast, and I think maybe there's some people, especially in China, and we have a small group, the community leadership group to discuss about such things. And I think it's good to, for them to know, know better about, the, about that. And I think just like Chaos provides us a community of, to learn about the, not only the software, but also the, the metrics behind the reason or all the context or the just like the whole story of the metrics. So in this way, we are not only get know about the metrics, but we know how to find out or how to set up the metrics to meet our goals. And that is beautifully said as, you know, being part of the chaos project, we all learn from each other. We are a community of practitioners. And so I learned from you just the same while open source software today is powering critical infrastructure, the open source ecosystem as a whole is rapidly changing, facing challenges for governance, maintenance, maintainer burnout, funding, marketing, and more. Are you concerned about these things for your open source software too? Well, in the Sustain community, we discuss these challenges and share solutions for how to sustain open source in the long haul. We meet once per year in person, and the rest of the time, we keep the fire burning in our discourse forum. Join our conversations at sustainoss.org and sustain OSS on Twitter. So I want to dig in a little bit deeper on one thing 
that you mentioned, and that is you are looking at project health through the metrics. And I was wondering if you could share an example of one or two metrics that you have found valuable in how you understand project health and how you're using the metric now. And this is for anyone here, if you want to talk about but Willem, since you brought it up. Okay. We gathered the reports from the project. There was 30 projects that we care about. And the first part, the metric is not how many codes they commit. I just look into how many new contributor or how many new PMC member was at. So in this way, we can know uh, if the community is growing or if they can have the new blood into their project. And uh, I think this is very important for a sustainable open source project. We still need the new people to come in. And uh, if they are keeping adding the new people, then I think that the project, the house is good. But if there's a half year, they don't have any new committed. And uh, even if they don't have a lot of commits or release, it's indicating they are not active now. So maybe we need to take actions to have this project. That is what I learned from the Apache Software Foundation's report mechanism. They, they use this kind of uh, matrix to, to find out the health of the Apache projects. Yeah, I think I can share a story about uh, we use the metrics. So when I take the chaos metrics to the AI community, MindSpore, we use the time to first response to measure the community activities. So finding that the community treats new developer as a big problem because when the developer open an issue, they have a lot of time for the manager to answer them. So we have developed the issue distribution robots to help developers to find the issue participants as soon as possible. The robots can also identify simple issues and mark them as good first issues. So in addition, we have established a mentor mechanism to allow these mentors to take the initiative to help developers understand the community development process. So I think we will find that the metrics that will have connections with each other. So when we lower down the time to first response, we found that the contributions and the contributors in the community increases. So two months later, we found that more and more developers participate in the community. They don't even need robots to tag them. They obviously have learned it by themselves. So I think that's the purpose we have to find out and try to establish a kind of models to connect it, each uh, metrics to find out the key metrics or key values of the metrics itself. That's awesome. It's really great to hear that you can have this metric and you start to understand the community and then you actually see a change in the community as you're improving the metric. And in this case, it was time to first respond. Actually, one of the research topic in my lab is about open source governance. So that's why my mentor also encouraged me to learn more about metrics in chaos. And remember, I shared, before I shared a GitHub Insight report to the community and I posted on the blog post, that's what we were doing. We were analyzing a large, a sizable GitHub event streams and try to know what we can do. And chaos metrics, especially the metrics in evolution working group provide us such kind of perspectives. And for me personally, actually the first working group I participate most is the DI diversity and inclusion working group. And I think that is the perfect place for me to learn what is a community because the working group itself is very diverse and inclusive. And actually, the community also helps me build the sense of belonging to chaos, which motivates me to grow with the community. But most, or I'll just say most of the metrics in the diversity and inclusion working group is not so quantity, it's based on quality. 
analysis and we need to conduct interviews and surveys and that's a a not so familiar way for especially the major our major to do such thing and we didn't get into it uh, too much but i think we are planning to use interviews and survey to have some more insights in open source although it's a bit sociology but i think it's important to understand open source and the governance after i entered the chaos community I found that the community had already sought out the metrics of the issue and the request in very, very detail. But I don't have any new metrics to contribute to this community. But I found that the two important, uh, two critical process is in the issue and the peer pre-request. The issue is a key to drive the code into integration, you know, it is the uh, so code change occur only when required and the vulnerability exists with the issue. Request is the process of implementing the issue. And in the Git workflow, branch is pooling and the merge branch is the most important task. And the branch life circle, they start from the branch pooling and the merging. Therefore, the, I have two indicators. One is mapping the the uh, branch circle and the uh, one is the uh, issue and the pre request mapping. These two important uh, uh, metrics during the integration, closing the request should mean close an uh, issue with mapping. And uh, this is complete development, the full development process in the community. We connect the, the one is the uh, entrance, other is exit, input and output. So we can link the full process together. Yeah, that's the model. Yeah, I look forward to the conversations in the model working group and to see how we actually go about formalizing that or documenting all of this so that we can reuse it and share it with others. So we are Coming to the end of this episode already, it went by really fast today. I, I can't believe it's already time. So where can people find you online? You know, they listen to you. They think you're doing good work. Where can they connect with you online and follow your work? Maybe we can share the WeChat contact. Yes, let's put it in the show notes. For myself, I have a, a Twitter handle, which is William Jiang, and uh, people can follow me. And I also have a blog website, but it's all Chinese. It's dot github dot io. And if anyone who is interesting about uh, ALC Beijing's, we also have WeChat account. It's called ALC slash ALC Beijing. I, I will add to the to the chat link. If anyone who is interesting about using the metrics inside of the inner source project, you can ping me and through this channel. Yeah, I have a Twitter account and a Facebook because we, I'm also the Orbit member. The Orbit, com, Orbit community will also have some propaganda and other so like some materials to share. So I have to share these things in English on the Twitter. So and the last uh, episode of the cast, the cast invi- invited Orbit CEO Patrick Woods to. <laughs> share the orbit mode in the cloud. So the Patrick Woods is my friend and we are also try to contribute something to the chaos about the developer experience. So you can find these things in, in my Twitter and my Facebook. And you, you can also just also visit our LinkedIn account. I'm sorry, I don't have the Twitter and the Facebook account. So have a WeChat account, Xiaokun774780. If you're interested in the Chaos Project, you can connect me. I have a link in, and you can focus on the stars on my account. So very, uh, I'm very glad you can, you are interested in the Chaos Project and you can connect me. That's awesome. Thank you so much. It sounds like I, I, I might have to uh, sign up for WeChat now. <laughs> So we always like to end our 
podcast episodes with value ads, where we share something that has brought value, joy, or meaning to our life. This can be an open source project. It can be a chaos metric. It can be something completely unrelated, uh, just something that you found valuable. And I can kick us off. Something today <laughs> that brought value into my life is a new bed. We're finally getting a new bed. And I'm just super excited about that. I don't want to go into details and bore you with all the details, but I'm super excited. Okay. My pick is first is good luck with my paper. And in fact, what I wish more at this moment is to slow down a while after the deadline because it's really exhausting and painful to hush the paper out. Oh, and can I have two picks? Because yes, I course. really I really feel excited to share that on this year's ChaosCom, I just got the message yesterday that me and King, we had a proposal and it's got accepted. And our topic is based on some best practices in the industry and try to seek for the connection between metrics and build the metrics models, as we mentioned in, the, in this episode. But it's a pity that we, we will only share the talk online this time. I wish we could meet offline someday. Congratulations to the acceptance. Yeah, it's really and amazing. I also, and I also hope at some point we can meet on, in person again. Yeah. Willem, would you like to share value add next? My pick today is the RPG Asia 2021. It's, it's like we made it. And we just did some closing up and past things and to write the reports and to, to move on to the next event we are holding in local community of Beijing. And I also want another pick is recently I'm reading about some book about the social science. It's a new areas for me to explore and, but it's really can explain a lot of things that the person me and because I'm an engineer and uh, normally I, I just think straightforward and uh, it's really hard for me to, to get touch with people. But uh, recently I, I, I read about some social uh, science book and it's ex explained uh, everything for me. And I'm really glad I, I have a chance to read about them and to know better about how to get in touch with people. Sounds like good reading recommendation. If you have a link to it, uh, please add it to the show notes. King, what is your value add? I'm very grateful to everyone to putting up my best English in community. Uh, I hope to improve my English levels and communicate with you much better and uh, express my thoughts uh, more cleanly. Hopefully, we can do a better job and uh, have more people involved in Chaos Project and uh, we have the conclusion, the idea together. That's, I think that will be also will be greater. And uh, last wish is I hope we'll more and more people to join in the Chaos Project. That's awesome. Yeah. I think that's a really good goal. Clement, what's your value add? I'm preparing for my first release conference about our community AI robots. And this we're holding in Shanghai and in September. So uh, welcome to our conference and the meetup and see how the AI technology to help the community to increase their activities and uh, contributors. Yeah, awesome. And so at this time to say thank you. Thank you, Shoya, Willem, King, and Clemen for joining us today on this podcast episode. Yes, thanks. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, thanks all. Yeah. Thanks to have us. Thanks, uh, George. Thank thanks, you Georg. for organizing this podcast. Yeah, yeah. my pleasure. <laughs> and thank you, dear audience, for joining us today. To stay up to date on future episodes, subscribe for free to this podcast on your favorite podcast app. Share this podcast with your friends and colleagues. And if you have ideas for future episode topics or would even like to come on as a guest, please email us, podcast at chaos.community. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Until next time, your chaos community.